As we all know, getting that perfect autograph of your favorite player's rookie card is huge. So how do we go about doing that? All right, number one, what's the best pen color? This is a big decision and one you don't want to get wrong. And sometimes you do need to prep your chrome style cards. Do you want to have an autograph grade on your slab? All right, welcome back to another episode of the Power Sports and Rebellious Show. I am your host, Matt Powers. Thank you again for joining me. Please visit the website, powersportsandrebellious.com. Also, give me a follow over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. So how do you get the perfect autographed sports card at your next signing? Now, this may seem like a very uh, easy item to get autographed, but picking out the right pen and color for your next sports card autograph can be a challenge. Believe me, I've made a lot of mistakes and had some really great ones come out there. Uh, so it is a little bit of a process to go through here. As we all know, getting that perfect autograph of your favorite player's rookie card is huge. So how do we go about doing that? What else should we be thinking about when we're getting that next card signed, right? Here are five things to consider before you get your next sports card signed. All right, number one, what's the best pen color? Now, this is a big decision and one you don't wanna get wrong. Fortunately, it's an easy one to make in most cases. You know, my go-to color is blue. Uh, whenever the color of the card allows for it, that's what I go with. It shows up in light and also dark spots and is a solid fade resistant color. However, if you can't use blue on every single card due to the color design of the card, if you are unsure about what color to choose, I recommend getting something clear like a penny sleeve, a top loader, or even a sandwich bag, and writing on that item the colors that you are considering, okay? Then take that item, that clear item that you just wrote on, and lay it over your card. Now this will give you a visual of what it might look like in each of those colors that you are considering. All right, number two, what pen to go with? Now, in most cases, my go-to pen is a blue Sharpie. Sharpies dry very fast and are consistent on any type of card. If I am going with a blue color, in most cases, I go with the Sharpie. However, if you wanna go with a different color of blue, say a lighter shade, then uh, going with a paint pen is probably going to be your best option. And Deco brand uh, paint pens, they work extremely well. I use them all the time. If the card is a paper finish, all right, so think 1980s Fleer or Tops, for example, I generally go with a Sharpie on those. No need to get all sort of crazy with a paint pen unless you want some you know, weird, different looking color. However, if the card does have a chrome finish on it, so take, for example, Tops Chrome or Prism, uh, I find a deco paint pen uh, just has the signature pop more than a standard Sharpie, especially if I'm going with a silver, gold, or a red color, kind of any oddball color, anything outside of the standard black and blue. And sometimes you do need to prep your chrome style cards to uh, remove some of that glossiness from, their, uh, from, the, the, from the card and to give it a little bit of tackiness so when the paint pen goes on, it goes on nice and smooth and doesn't bubble. Uh, you can do this with baby powder or a white eraser. Essentially, just cover the car with a light coating of baby powder uh, and then wipe it off there with a, you can use a Kleenex or a um, or any sort of towel to get it to get it off there. You're looking to give it some tackiness to the car so when the autograph goes onto it, it's got something nice to stick to it. With the white eraser, you can do the same exact thing. Just rub it all over the card, you know, light enough to remove some of that kind of glossiness to it, but not hard enough to damage the card. And then uh, when you're done doing that, again, just wipe all that off so you get all that material off that. Again, you don't need to do this to every single card, all right? You will know 100% if you need to do this by doing the following, all right? Now, if you're still unsure what pen and color to choose, what I like to do is buy some cheap base cards from the set I'm uh, trying to get signed and physically test the pens on them, okay? Take, for example, these uh, Michael Porter Jr. Uh, 2018 Prism uh, rookie cards, right? Now, I wanna use a yellow paint pen on them, but I wanna see what it looks like before I get all 10 of them signed, all right? 
So I bought some uh, $2 base cards from the same exact set of other players just to test out the pens on them. Okay? That way I get kind of an exact look of what the pen's gonna look like. And also I can uh, you know, double check to see if I need to make any changes as far as the color and also the pen type. Now, if I go with the pen that I'm thinking of and the pen starts to bubble up there or it looks like absolute junk, okay, then I know I will need to prep the card a little bit, right? So I'll prep it with one of the little baby powders there or i uh, use that uh, white eraser and see if it holds a better signature and then retest those same pens on there. And if it looks a lot better, then I know I need to prep that style of card. All right, number three, should you get an inscription? And one thing to keep in mind is the size of an athlete's autograph. Guys like Mike Tyson and Dennis Robin have huge flamboyant autographs. You know, getting more than one inscription on an item uh, like that's like a sports car. It's really, really small. They're basically three by four inches. It might not look great if you get a whole bunch on there, right? So what I would suggest doing if you're considering getting an inscription is study the autograph first before deciding on that inscription, all right? Take a look at some examples there, see how big the autograph is, and maybe see if there are some items out there that have inscriptions on there and see if you like how it looks. And I would you know, basically stick to doing one inscription if you do get one. You get a bunch on there, it just kind of doesn't really fit and it looks kind of, it just takes away from the card in my opinion. So I like to stick to one and stick with the big inscriptions such as, you know, their Hall of Fame year or their nickname. And number four, should you get an authenticity hologram on your card? Now this one all depends on the collector. Some prefer not to have anything added to their cards, but some like having the authentication uh, on the actual item itself in the form of a sticker on the back of the card, mainly because they you know, don't plan on getting it slabbed by PSA or Beck at this time and they wanna have some authentication on the item. Or if they're planning on getting it slab, they like having the extra authentication on there for guys who are known to sign with certain companies, like an MLB hologram from Mike Trout or an upper deck hologram from Michael Jordan, for examples. Uh, one thing to consider though, if you do plan on getting an item slabbed uh, by PSA or Beckett, and you do wanna make sure that they authenticate the autograph, is how sloppy is that athlete's autograph, okay? You need to think about that, okay? Is it one that's easy to authenticate? So take uh, Giannis, for example, okay? Very short, sloppy autograph. It might be kind of tough for PSA or Becca to authenticate that one slab in the car. However, if you had like a JSA witness sticker on the back, that will certainly help in determining uh, their decision. And again, always get the sticker on the back of the card, okay? Never on the front. And number five, should you get your card put into a slab? Okay, I prefer to get every card I have signed put into a slab and authenticated by PSA DNA. Okay, I like the look of PSA slabs. Uh, it makes it easy to store and sell. Uh, other company, of course, that you can use is Beckett. Uh, whether you are selling your card or you want to have it protected, you know, putting into a slab is the best way to do both of those. You know, keep in mind if you do use PSA, their cheapest price. Uh, to get it into a slab with the label stating the exact card, such as Terry Cheater 1993 SP foil, is currently 150 bucks, all right? So that's when PSA determines your card is authentic and then PSA DNA authenticates the autograph. However, if you want their cheapest option and have you know PSA uh, DNA just authenticate just the autograph, they put it uh, trading card on the label, okay? It's, it's not the best looking slab at that point but it is the cheapest way to get uh, to get into one of their slabs. The cost of doing that depends on the athlete. You know, some athletes can be 20 bucks, some athletes can be more than 100. Um, pricing is on PSA's website, so you, so you can just type in the athlete's name and the exact price will pop up for you. Uh, you can send your cards directly to PSA and then pay the price uh, on their website uh, for the autograph authentication, or you can use a submission group and get a bit of a discount. However, using a submission group can take three to five months to get your cards back. Okay, they get a bulk rate, so you pay a little bit less, but it is a lot slower process. Sending direct to PSA, uh, in my experience, I can get those back in probably about a month, just a little bit over a month. So it's actually a fairly quick process doing it yourself. Uh, last thing to consider is do you wanna have an autograph grade on your slab? 
meaning do you want PSA DNA to grade the quality of the autograph? I like having the autograph graded on my higher end cards. I think it definitely adds value to it. Uh, it is an additional cost for PSA to, uh, to do that for you. Also keep in mind, you know, any autograph where the ink skips, smudges, or touches the side of the card will most likely not receive a 10, okay? So I don't grade cards that have those sorts, or don't grade the autograph on cards that have that, those sorts of issues. So I yeah, hope this helps you guys, you know, getting your next card signed. I, I know it can be kind of overwhelming. You know, you want to get it right and you want a perfect autograph as we all do. And hopefully these steps will help, uh, you know, you to get the best looking autograph possible on your next card that you get signed. If you guys got any questions, let me know below in the comments. Again, if you guys like this sorts of videos, again, feel free to share, uh, like, and subscribe. Definitely always appreciate it. Visit the website, powersportsmobility.com, and also give me a follow over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. I will see you on the next episode.